for life. This is the Joy Business Report with me, Mami Sinya Michel Thompson. In the headlines, Treasury bills interest rates rise again to 32.17% as government records 29% oversubscription. Also, economist Dr. Ishmael Yamsin criticized government for ignoring all the signs showing that the economy was collapsing in 2022. And ratings agency Fitch expresses uncertainty about the takeoff of the Ghana Financial Stability Fund. Details now, an interest rate rose again on the money market to 32.17% after government recorded 29.6% of a subscription of Treasury bill sales to the tune of 3.350 billion CDs. According to auction results by the Bank of Ghana, 77.6% of the bids tendered came from the 91-day Treasury bill. Let's hear some more from this report. The gender wage gap is lowest among paid workers, with tertiary education or more where women earn 12.7%, less than their male counterpart. The wage gap is highest among workers with basic education, with 60.1%. We apologize for that wrong insert. We'll be bringing you that report in subsequent bulletins. Now, economist Dr. Ishmael Yamsin has criticized the government for ignoring all the signs showing that the economy was collapsing in 2022. According to him, government was aware of the dire consequences that overborrowing could have on the economy. He said that government make, must take prudent steps to bring the economy to full recovery. He's speaking at a public lecture to mark the fifth anniversary of Academic City University College. Since the issues were known, and, and I don't think anybody can ever say that they were not aware of the issues facing the country and the likely consequences. So what they should have done, simply understand the implications of those issues, clearly, clearly, and with honesty, determine what they can do to change the course of what they were doing. I think the biggest risk was that they refused to accept that things were not going in the right direction, even when the signs were all over the place. So that is what I think that we should do differently going forward. You must be honest enough to accept. Dr. Ishmael Yamsin is economist and former chairman of Unilever Ghana. Another economist, Professor Lord Mensah, has described as premature the Bank of Ghana's comments that the recent downward inflationary trend is due to monetary policy measures implemented by the central bank. According to him, the monetary policy tightening over the period had little impact on inflation. He added that the recent inflation showdown is seasonal, therefore cannot be attributed to monetary policy measures. He is reacting to the assertions by the governor, Dr. Ernest Addison. The recent decline is due to measures implemented by the bank. If you look at the seasonal dynamics of the, uh, the, the inflation, clearly uh, September has always been a, a month of more or less uh, inactive economic activities in this country. And so usually we record low inflation, relative low inflation in September. But I would say that it's too early to attribute the policy measures having impact on the inflation. And so uh, let's wait and see how consistent this measure will keep on uh, bringing the inflation down. So we can attribute, you know, the policy committee measures on inflation. But for now, I see the inflation dynamic to be sensitive to the policy rate. Economist Professor Lord Mensah there now rates agency Fitch has expressed uncertainty about the takeoff of the Ghana Financial Stability Fund. The fund established to provide liquidity support to banks should have taken off this month. But speaking at the Africa webinar series titled Reform and New Challenges in Western Africa, Director for Europe, the Middle East and Africa in charge of bank ratings, Tim Slater, said the government was struggling to raise money for the fund to take off. The authorities have announced the creation of a Ghana Financial Stability Fund. 
um, intended to provide support to the banking sector. But it's it's uncertain when that fund will become operational, as is the, the type of support, be it capital support, local currency liquidity support, or even foreign currency liquidity support that will be made available to banks and on what terms any support is, is made available. I think one mitigating factor in terms of the, the impact on the banking sector is the high foreign ownership. The subsidiaries of foreign banks um, control over 50% of Ghanaian banking sector assets. And quite interestingly, we feel as though that will reduce the burden on the authorities to to provide capital support when and where it may be required. You had director in charge of the IMM ratings on at Fitch, Tim Slater, for Europe, the Middle East and Africa. Some stakeholders have raised concerns about the number of Ghanaian professionals and students leaving the country to seek greener pastures elsewhere. Recent reports show that there are many Ghanaians leaving the country for better job opportunities in Europe and the United States. Speaking at a forum to help reverse the trend, economist Dr. Eric Osei Asibe said the situation is worrying and must be addressed immediately. Uh, recently, I traveled to Japan. Uh, the Japanese government organized um, uh, what we called Sakura Exchange for African educational leaders and government institutions, uh, big schools in uh, Japan. And we met some African students. We wanted to interact with them, uh, students from Nigeria, from Ghana, uh, from Egypt, and other places. And we were telling them why they should come back to help build country, Africa. In fact, I was shocked. The students were so furious, they wanted to lynch us. They said, Prof, why should we come back? There was one Ghanaian among them who said, Prof, why should I come to Ghana? Come back to do what? What is the job? Is there any job for me? Economist Dr. Eric Osei Sidney there. Now, the country director of the British Council, Nido Dudodu, has reiterated his outfit's commitment to supporting universities to harness the entrepreneurship mindset of young people to develop viable ventures. According to him, support of this nature are, is critical because the youth are a powerful resource needed for economic development. You're speaking at the launch of an enterprise support and development curriculum by the University of Ghana Business School. As we all know, Africa's greatest resource are its young people. And that's why for us, if you want to kind of impact African young people, then universities are one of the areas to try and push that support. The University of Ghana Business School is then created a curriculum because we did realize that a lot of the universities interested in entrepreneurship development but lack the basic resources for that. And so they've created an open source curriculum. We work with enablers to try and also build coaching and mentoring services so that university students who are interested in setting up businesses right from when they are in university have access just not curriculum but other entrepreneurs industry people who have gone you know through that same path to help you know support them now interestingly wage differentials show that women in ghana pay 34.2 percent less than men this is according to a data from the first quarter of the 2022 annual household income and expenditure survey from the ghana statistical service the estimated gender wage gap adjust for age, approximate years of work experience, highest level of education amongst others. James Ashen has more on this report. The gender wage gap is lowest among paid workers with tertiary education or more where women earn 12.7 percent less than their male counterpart. The wage gap is highest among workers with basic education with 60.1 percent followed by workers with no education having 54.0 percent. When comparing sectors of employment, the gender wage gap is the highest in the private informal sector, where women are paid 58.7% less than men. This is followed by the private formal sector, with a wage gap of 29.9%. The public sector, where women are paid 10.5% less than men, has the lowest gender wage gap. Among the population aged 36 to 60 years, Women are paid 33.4% less than men, a wage differential almost 3.0 percentage points higher than for the age group 15 to 35 years, where women were paid 30.7% less than their male counterpart. 
James has shown with that report now to the stock markets. Shares of Guinness, Ghana breweries and fun milk are expected to soar this week on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Let's now hear from Grace Monayom of the Data Bank Research on how